Hi, I'm Rosie McLeese, the chair of the Payette County Master Gardeners, and I want to welcome you today to the Idea Garden Annual Trials with Ann Tice. Ann Tice has been a Champaign Master Gardener for 23 years, and she has run the annual trial program with the University of Illinois uh, Extension Master Gardeners Volunteers in the Idea Garden in Champaign for 22 years. The Idea Garden is located on the University of Illinois Arboretum in Urbana, and the trial garden is within the Idea Garden. And this involves between 1,200 and 2,000 plants a year, and we're going to hear about some of those today. Anne has been awarded the Illinois State Outstanding Master Gardener Award, Teamwork Award, and the Sustained Excellence Award. Excuse me. She's also won Chicago Tribune's Glorious Gardens Contest twice and the National Scots Walmart Prize. Her Illinois garden has been featured in two magazines. So we welcome Anne and thank all of you for being here with us today. Well, thank you. Can, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Yep. yeah. Yep. Okay, I'm glad you're here. And spring is here too. It arrived at 5.24 p.m. yesterday. Do you feel it? <laughs> I don't know, but I, I, this is a sign I found uh, while we were oh, traveling out west. I want to tell you a couple things as an overview. I'll be going over how we trial things and then get to this year's winner. Um, I do have four handouts and that's pretty overwhelming. The first one is just exactly what I'm going to tell you, and it has all the names printed out. There's three bonus handouts. The first one is a summary of all of the winners of our trials from 2006 until last year. Now, those are the best of the best, and most of the ones from previous years are gold medal winners that I put on there. There would be way too many if I put them all on there, so those are just the premium ones in my mind. I have no conflict of interest with any company or anything I'm talking about other than I enjoy looking at them. And uh, as an extension representative, I don't uh, push any one product or any one company over another. There's certainly other options. Um, I had a little bit more extra work to do because of the copyright issues. So I made a lot of my humor slides. I had a whole bunch of cartoon and humor slides all stockpiled from years of lecturing, but I couldn't use those. So I, I made them differently. And I had to get permission from everyone that took a photo, including my husband taking photos of me, and also the people in the photos. I didn't get everyone's permission. So you're going to see how I handled that in a little bit. Anyway, let me see if we can start. That would be really nice. Start. Oh, come on. It's not advancing, Joe. My husband is my techie. Ah, there it is. Oh, let's see. How do I, sorry. How do I get this top thing out? Top thing. That. Don't have your I'm going to get my tech ass. Anyway, I have been interested in plants and annuals since I could walk. Um, and my techie is doing something. It's cutting off all the top of the slides. Just, just, it'll go away if you just leave it. Well. All right. So anyway, here's me testing out a marigold when I just learned to walk. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just do this. I don't know why it's covering that up. Annuals can make a difference. They can make a big swath of color. I wonder if it, this could come down here. Uh, I apologize, everyone. I'm going to let it go. Anyway, here at Disney, they have giant displays for their flower and garden shows, and uh, it's impressive. Annuals are good because they make season-long color, and even though they aren't sustainable in a way because they don't come back the next year like perennials and shrubs do, it is helpful to have some annuals around the house, and we've tested out annuals for 22 years now, at least I have. Uh, I can tell you some of the better ones, which is on that best of. Even if you only plant one little pot of annuals near your front door, it could be cute like this kitten. Where these trials are done, as she mentioned, they're done at the Idea Garden at the University of Illinois in Urbana, Illinois, by Master Gardeners. It's an all-volunteer group. 
The trials, uh, during the trials, master gardeners research, assess, and evaluate donated plants. We make a design on a blank slate. And the most important thing is we educate the public and us with what may be good. The idea garden is visited by the University of Illinois professors and students. So uh, it's helpful because they can see the plants and then teach their students about it. And as I mentioned before, we share our experience, but in no way endorse any company. Hold on just a second. Yeah, I'm gonna get my husband to stop doing some scanning in the background. Where are these trials done? Uh, we already went over that. I apologize. Where do we get the plants? We get have gotten them since 2001 or two from the Proven Winners Company. For a number of years, we got them from Ball Horticultural, which is also Pan American Seeds, but we're not getting those anymore. But many of them are new and not yet released. We're, this is a correction of the handout. The uh, Proven Winners Group used to have 47 different trial gardens across the US and Canada, but now it's only 40 that I could count. We are the only master garden group and the only volunteer group allowed to do this. And the main reason is because we hand in detailed evaluations up at the end. Most of the other trial areas are really big university field trials or large botanic gardens. Um, but keeping the detailed records is the way we've been able to still stay on this program, and I hope that will continue. About the Proven Winter Company, they were started in 1992 with three nurseries. They work with international top breeders, and they work on improvements of flowers and annuals and shrubs. For flowers, they, they try to stress getting the earliest to flower, excellent branching, good habit, and good performance. They want to have the consumer succeed in growing these plants. So they have combined a lot of wizardry to make this true. To get an annual to market, they go through lengthy trials. Out of thousands that they test, there are only maybe a few that make it through to the final trial um, trials like we do at um, Urbana, Illinois. It takes six plus years to get a plant from the beginning until they make it, and only 3% make it. Proven winners and proven selections are highly rated plants, but there's a little difference. Proven winter plants, if they label it as such, they try to have plants that are doing well over the entire country. So all the way from South Florida to California, whereas proven selections are highly qualified plants just for a specific area instead of the entire country. That'd be hard to do to do the whole country, but that's the kind of annuals we do get. A lot of the annuals are hybrids. For instance, these are some examples of Ball's uh, company interspecific hybrid impatience. We love the bounce, the big bounce. And since then they've made sun patients. They're all fabulous plants. There is a lot of problems with downy mildew on the impatience wallerianii. And they combined that uh, species with the um, New, New Guinea, impatience and they were able to get lots of blooms on the flowers and continuous bloom without getting the downy mildew so these are not genetically modified they're bred for specific things what we do is we get plugs in which are about the size of your thumb and trays and we grow them after transplanting them in the greenhouse we used to grow at parkland and this year we're back at university in illinois greenhouses by an shared by our greenhouse goddesses, Jimmy Nell Duden and Patty Stoffel, and a bunch of other helpers. The plants are photoed when they come in, handouts are made on colors, the height and the width and disseminated to people. And then when they're all mature, uh, middle of May, usually they're ready to go. In 2022, we had, uh, we we're, we got 48 plants, 24 are released now, just now this spring in 2023. And they did also have one new perennial. 
This year, we're getting 48 varieties from proven winners and 24 are new and will be out next year. They're not available yet. And they all, as I mentioned, come in as plugs. They're not seed grown. The others of that 48 varieties are ones that have been out before and they like to send those to us as comparisons. So we may get several new petunias, but they also ship us some of their better petunias to compare how they're doing. We never know what's going to come in. It's a big surprise every time. And I love it to see the new ones. When the boxes arrive, it's like Christmas in March. We're due to get ours next week. I'm thrilled. Uh, the Idea Garden is at the University of Illinois, as I mentioned, in Urbana, Illinois. This is a picture from last year where we did something new. We got some containers, and I'll mention those in a bit. This is one of the winners this year, this bright yellow, happy little petunia called Mini Vista Yellow, and I'll be talking about that later. Designs are made for all five new areas. This happens to be on the west side. Detailed design. It's a lot of plants to squish in there, but we also will plant them in other areas of the idea garden also. After the designs are made, when it gets close to planting time, I spray paint the areas and I set out the plants. Now, see, I told you I didn't get permission from every single person, so um, I've got happy faces here. Everyone will be happy in these next couple pictures. They're planted at the idea in the annual trial garden and see everyone really is enjoying their job. And I thank you to everybody that helps every spring when we have so many plants to get in the ground. And I'm sorry I couldn't get permission from each and every one of you, but I'm happy to see you. They're also planted in and around the idea garden. So not just the trial areas, but in other uh, landscape settings also. We work our butts off but shall remain nameless. There's new designs are created each year on a clean slate, a blank slate. This is the far east side, that's the west side. And we plant them mostly around the shed, but we did have new containers this area. And now there's five areas we need to fill with these plants. Why it's as easy as one, two, three. Wow, this is last year and all the trials. Now you'll see these petunias up front were spectacular yet again. They also tolerate more water than other plants will take, but they make a great front of the border show. New in 2022, we got several large containers. And here's Tom, uh, one of the co-chairs of the trials area, and my husband, Joe, who calls himself a minor gardener because he does help with this too. These are very large containers. And there are some plants like the calabacoa really need to be in a container. They usually pout when they're in the ground. A couple things to point out about these self-watering containers. I'm gonna show you several slides. One is if you have them in the ground, it's best to have them on a flat surface such as a stone or a concrete pad because they have a drainage hole in the bottom of them. If you put it on mulch, the mulch can kind of guck up in there and it won't drain properly. So that's one little thing to learn about these self-watering containers. The entire idea of getting containers came from when we visited Michigan State University with this huge sweep of annuals that they trial, and it makes a beautiful sidewalk addition. Now, I'd looked at containers before, and there are several different kinds out here, but I, I needed large containers. And I'd looked around at those because the calabacoas always did terrible in the ground. And rather by accident, I was visiting one of Proven Winter's growing areas in Southeast Michigan. And they said, oh, we have a whole stack of those old self-watering containers. They were used. They were changing over to newer ones. And I was able to buy these at a greatly reduced price. They are expensive normally. Um, the kind we got are called True Drop self-watering containers and they're made by the Crescent Company. It's interesting because the water reservoir is on the inside and here you can see down in it, it has several different levels where you put the soil in it and then the plants, if they're growing up a little bit, can draw water from it. If you'll see here, this is the Crescent Company I'm talking about, they have a cut through, a diagram of how the water levels are here and 
the plant roots, when they get more mature, are able to get down to that and draw water. Now, when you first put these baby plants in in the early spring, you probably do need to water from above also until those roots get more mature. If you'll notice, there's two holes in the side of the container. One is a plug that you can pop off to fill with water, and the other is a water indicator, a water meter. If it's empty, these are attached to little floating, um, I'll call them bobbers, I guess. If it's empty, none of the blue raindrops show, but two thirds full, two of them will come up, float up to the top. And if it's completely full, then all three will come up. So it's kind of a nice idea of allowing you to know how much water you have left and if you have to refill it. So here's our containers. Yes, they're used and they were a little beat up, but what are all these bumps on the side? Fascinating thing is these are called the dot containers and all of this is actually braille. And it's a Robert Frost poem, Spring Pools which I thought added a little bit more interest at the idea garden. Now the company has tons of other types and styles and colors and sizes of pots. Here are just a few. Uh, this is where you plug the bottom so it does not drain out and it can hold plants kept inside. Back to what we do for evaluations. How do we rate these plants? Well, here's our third member of the main evaluation team, Patty, is being Vanna White, and she's pretty in pink looking at the Petunia Vista bubblegum. Vista bubblegum is the top selling plant of annuals that Proven Winners has, and it's gorgeous. It's always prolific and that bubblegum pink. Well, how do we do the evaluations? We check on them each month from June through September, and all plants get an overall rating between one and five. One meaning it's a pretty miserable plant or a bunch of them died. Five meaning, oh my gosh, I've got to have that plant next week. We also do things like rate the bloom coverage. And that is the percentage of the plant, if it is a flowering plant, that is covered with blooms. The top number you can get for that is four. So if a plant rated four, that means 75% to 100% of the whole plant is covered with blooms. We check for disease and pests and we give a lot of comments and reactions to the plants each month. Now, what's been great about the last two years is we've had a really good team um, that's on the trials area and they help take care of the plants, but they also submit their comments on the plants and those I love, and the company loves to hear those too. At the end, the scores are averaged over all the areas they're planted and the conditions they're in. So at the very end, I do an Excel write-up. That's where it, this comes in. Math is hard. The numbers are averaged, all four months are tabulated, medals are awarded, and then an Excel uh, form is made with all that information and monthly comments sent to the company, the master gardeners and the local nurseries. And that's how we managed to still have plants donated to us to trial. This is an example of last year's Excel form. I did send it to you. Oh, golly, if you have a hard time opening it because you don't have Excel on your computer, you can email me. My email's on the handout at the beginning, and I can send it to you also in a PDF form. But it names the plant. These are the ratings every single month. For instance, this one uh, got a rating of five out of five the last two months, and here's its overall average. These are the ratings for balloon coverage. But I think the the most important three columns are here. The awards, any plant that won an award, particularly the gold medals, I, I would pay attention to. And I also try to list if they were some of the top winners, like this white one was a top winner over all the plants in August and also September. There's comments on it. And, and I started adding this in just because this is what's important to the company and to me too. Would you buy it? If uh, the majority of people say, yes, they would buy it, then probably it's a good plant. Now, some people will say, no, I wouldn't buy it because they don't like red. Well, that isn't any big uh, criticism of the plant. It's just personal preference. But these are kind of interesting to take a poll of the Master Gardener's end of the season. 
the company uses our evaluations. This is an old slide from Petunia, uh, Supertunia Vista Bubblegum, and they use our comments. So basically, when we go out to evaluate them, if you look at this, this is from several years past, what plants strike your eye? Which ones catches your eye? Are, is it the tiny little flocks or the gara here that are blooming sparsely? Or is it the argyranthemum butterfly, which looks great? And these vista or mini vista petunias, probably those, and perhaps the ornamental millet in the back, purple majesty. So those are the ones that strike your eye. And a lot of times we'll just kind of stand back at the month and say, oh, which ones really stand out this month and look the best? So that's added in the comments. Well, we also keep track of did a lot die. Obviously, it's not a great plant if a lot died. This is poor little Calibricoa Superbell's double orchid. Looks beautiful. But unfortunately, this is what it looked like as it was growing later season. We also rate them for pests and disease. These are tiny little um, flea beetles on a Cleome, and bunnies do romp through the garden, the hungry plant attack bunny. They can do a lot of devastation. It's not the plant's fault, so you can't really criticize the plant for that. Here's the different um, levels of gold, silver, and metal, bronze medals we win. Don't pay any attention to the numbers. Just know that getting a gold medal for a plant is really hard. We also give extra bonus to the plants that look super in September. I call them September showstoppers. They get extra credit. This is cute little petunia, super tunia, mini vista pink star. And there it is, this is June, and there is that sweet little plant in September, still looking great. So a good thing to do with uh, any trial garden, Hartley Gardens or whatever, is go visit at the end of August and see what plant is thriving and still looks good. Some plants may not be a winner, but they can still be a great plant. This is a Calibricoa doublet love swept, and it's such a pretty little thing. It was not a winner. And, and keep in mind, most of the plants sent to us are very high quality. So if a plant rates an average of three, it's a good average plant. And this one might do that. So it's still a nice plant, but maybe not a blockbuster. So what do we as gardeners want in a plant, especially in an annual? We would like it to bloom nonstop, bloom under every condition, need absolutely no care. We'll just sit and look at it and be stunning. But some are just foliage plants. Some are better, say, early in the season, like nemesia. Some do need care, deadheading and fertilizer. So it depends upon the plant. Not all of the plants can be pretty all the time. But if they're ugly, it's not always their fault. This is my granddaughter and my son was messing around with some app to make her look ugly, but I loved it that they sent this to me. So a plant may look ugly depending upon where it's planted. As I mentioned, Calibricoa really hate to be planted in the ground, particularly the ground around Urbana, Illinois. This water they get from watering them is alkaline and the soil is alkaline. Well, they hate that. And they'll go into a big pout, their leaves are turned yellow and look sick like this one did. This was out of the greenhouse and that's a month or so later. It's not its fault. It needed to be in a container. That's why I was trying to get containers. There also is a usual seasonal growth pattern. For instance, generic petunias toward the end of the season will make a little brown zigzag and at the end have a little poof of bloom. And that's about it. But the new hybrid ones tend to do better. Uh, an exception to that is this petunia, supertunia, Picasso in blue. It's got great coloring, but it really pouted in the ground. This one needs to be fertilized regularly and perhaps trim back some. It wasn't too happy. But the Vista series and many Vista series of petunias just keep going and going and going like the Energizer Bunny. Verbenas all like to take, almost all, like to take a vacation in August. So they, they just leave for a while. The uh, foliage will be there. The blooms will be sporadic. And there's only a few blooms here. So a lot of them just rest and don't show well. 
this is over at the Hartley Gardens, which is next door to the Idea Garden. If you come to visit the Idea Garden, go over to Hartley Gardens too, because they get all sorts of different companies, uh, products and different seeds there and grow them. And the best time to look at them is at the end of August and see what looks good. Here's a whole row starting here over to here of verbena. These all went on vacation. This purple one has got a few blooms going, but it wasn't nearly as it was uh, good as it was at late June. The best verbena we've trialed over the years, these are all, the S's stand for superbena, violet ice, stormburst, whiteout, sparkling amethyst, and the ball company made some great ones. I still try to find and buy. The Endurascape pink bicolor, purple and, and blue. Uh, I think Proven Winter Company has changed the name of their Super Tunia Royal Chambray to Imperial Blue now. And we tried that recently and it was quite good too. The growers themselves had made things so much better that it's like magic. This is the Petunia Vista bubblegum, as I mentioned, and it, it just, it grows up and out and mounds over. This is its cousin, Vista Silverberry, and these two things you could see from two blocks away. So they are a wonderful hybrid. The other thing that's rather nice to know about is the vigor of a plant. It's rated on a one to four basis. This is my cartoon of a vigor of zero, and this is a strong man for the circus called Joe Bonobo. It is a copyright free picture. I would rate him as a vigor of four. Knowing the vigor of a plant does help with combining plants in a container. If you put in a very aggressive, vigorous plant with a tiny little, quote, shrinking violet plant, a little delicate one, it could be overwhelmed. It also helps you think which plants may be best in the landscape to cover an area. In your handout, there are some examples. The Lobularia snow princess is a vigor of four, the tops. The white knight is also white and looks exactly like it, except for it's more compact and less vigorous. And for that reason, I try to find it and use it to plant in my combination of containers because it doesn't get quite as crazy as Snow Princess, but I love Snow Princess. It'll get 36 inches wide. And then on down, the, the rocking series of Salvia by Proven Winners has a vigor of three. But the pink one, unplugged pink, and there's an unplugged blue, is a little bit less vigorous. It's a vigor of two, and you can read the rest. Uh, the verbenas, most of them we try are superbena. They're vigor of three, but we did try a little one which had a rigid stem and a little ball uh, of flower on the end. It had a vigor of two, and it was it was a disappointment. The cake pops. On to the photos. Maybe everybody doesn't want to see your plant photos. Yes, they do. Yay, the gold medal winners. I'm going to go over gold, silver, and bronze. So here's the gold. The top gold medal winners were two plants that got perfect scores. They scored five every single one of the four months. And here they are, a begonia surefire rose and a sweet potato illusion penny lace. And I'll put new after them if they're new. Also in your handout, um, if things are in bold, that is a new one that's out just this season. And I believe in that 2006 to 2022 best of the best uh, things, I highlighted in yellow the ones that were my favorite. But of course, that's my personal opinion. You may like other ones. The Begonia Surefire Rose has a vigor of four. All of the Surefires have a vigor of four. This was spectacular. And I do think these Begonias need a little bit of shade. Uh, they don't do quite as well if they're in full baking sun all day. Just a little shade will help them out. But here it is uh, in August looking fabulous. And with my friend Judy, it's both looking fabulous in September. It's over her knee high. So a big healthy plant and looked wonderful last year on the shady side of our shed. And that's hard to say. The sweet potato illusion penny lace. And in your handout, I give the uh, height and the width of these. So I'm not going to repeat all of them, but it looked good just about everywhere it's planted. It looked great in a container. 
it looked great coming over a wall and in the ground. So here there's two big blobs of it. I think there's three plants here and then also some in a container and it just took off and was lovely. And the vigor, here they are competing. Here's the vigorous uh, sweet potato competing against a petunia called persimmon in July. So they're both vigorous, they're fighting it out. Oh, I might mention this because I don't mention it later. This is a juncus. Um, it can overwinter. It's called blue mohawk and it was just a basic average plant. If you like the form or the texture, it can be helpful, but it did not win any awards. Other gold medal winners, the begonia surefire white to me was my favorite plant last year. It just grew up and it billowed out of containers. Here's an example of it in uh, the landscape at one of the Proven Winter Show places. And there they have it in a container. Here it is in a container. It has these draping bright white uh, blooms and they don't really get brown or yucky loving or yucky looking. One thing that Proven Winners tries to do is they try to make it so you don't have to deadhead things much or at all. And they like to say, well, they bury their dead. So what happens is a new bloom will come and cover up the old ones and keep doing that while the old ones are inside the plant and it just doesn't look as tacky then. So this, this is my new favorite and I've got to find a place to buy it this year. There were other begonias, not in the Surefire series, but the series called Double Up. And we got to try two of them last year. This one is Begonia Double Up White. It was a gold medal winner. It has a bronze leaf and these cute little powder puff of white blooms. Um, I had a little hard time wondering where we should plant it because I wasn't sure of the colors, but I love these things. They are so round and tidy and perfect. So here's a bunch of them. And the other one, which we'll see later is its cousin, Double Up Red. I'm sorry, the top is cut off, but anyway, this is Cypress uh, Graceful Grasses. This one is called Prince Tut, and we've had it before. It's a repeat winner, gold medal winner. It looks great in a pot, although it is a water hog. You need to water this frequently. And it also looks fabulous in the ground. Um, when I was giving a tour of the idea garden, a bunch of little second graders came up and they went nuts over it. They voted it the favorite plant in the whole garden because they look like fireworks. And in landscape or a container, it is really a lovely plant. Gomfrina, Trufula pink. We've had this in the past too, and it's been a repeat gold medal winner. It has these cute little cuffs of pink blooms with tiny yellow dots on it, and the pollinators love it. Here it is in a mass planting, and here it is combined uh, with a petunia. So they, they wave in the wind and they're delightful and the pollinators think they're great too. Sweet potato, sweet Caroline, Medusa green. Where has this been all my life? I need to find this one this year too. I, it may have been out before, but it was totally new to me. It's heavily lacy serrated edges. Uh, and it has that chartreuse green. Anytime you have a plant that's chartreuse, it will tend to blend really well and set off most of the other colors. Here it is with orange and yellow. And with purple, it's spectacular. This will be a, a flower we'll see in a bit, a mini vista midnight and salvia rockin' deep purple. But look how that medusa with its lacy foliage sets both of them off. Now here's some of the mini Vista petunias. These were both new last year and we enjoyed them both a lot. The mini Vista yellow, I think is a little bit more dominant and a little bit more vigorous. The mini Vista midnight is a gorgeous plant. It looks velvety when you get up close, but on occasion it can kind of blend in too much because it's so dark. Uh, it can recede a little bit versus say ones like that. Yeah, so look, here's the little yellow one, mini Vista yellow, see, yeah, and it's hard to see that purple in there. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. is somebody else talking? <laughs> oh, somebody else is going to give my lecture. 
But did you have a question about the Midi Vesta yellow? It is. It's hard to see that midnight hiding in the middle of it, but they're both mini vistas and vigorous plants. I thought the mini vista yellow was a blooming wonder. It, this is in the ground. It filled out the front of the border and I was thrilled with it. Another petunia which is new is Supertunia persimmon. Now in the vigor characteristics, they they name every one of their petunias supertunia. And then it may have a series like the Vista, which are very strong, or the mini Vistas. This is, quote, a plain supertunia called persimmon. It had phenomenal colors with this orange blending into a kind of red orange or fuchsia blending into a yellow center. And it was pretty vigorous. I will say that if you look at the comments on the Excel, by the end of August, it was getting a little fatigued and I don't know if it needed more fertilizer. We usually only put on a long acting fertilizer in the spring. And maybe if we're lucky, we'll fertilize another one or two times, but we try to let uh, the plants go as they would and maybe as a regular gardener would they don't fertilize all the time but I love this persimmon it looked great with a lot of other plants and I showed you this before where uh, the two of them are competing the, these are four to eight inches tall and two to three foot wide any of the mini Vista petunias did great. Again, we've trialed them a number of times. This is the mini Vista white. I'm just lumping them all together. And here's mini Vista white, mini Vista pink star, mini Vista hot pink, which is probably the strongest of all of them. But you can see these all have smaller blooms than its cousin, which is a Vista, Vista jazzberry. This is really gaining in popularity, this particular one. Um, these are more flooded with bloom, but jazzberry is another fabulous vista that just grows up and over things. And here they are in the ground. Here's jazzberry, hot pink, mini vista hot pink, mini vista pink star, and the white. So what better to do than to have these things at the front of your border? Wow, they are vigorous. Another great one that we saw was a coleus called Torchlight. It's been out before, but it is a full lush plant, a repeat winner, and it just grows amazingly. It's, it, it just makes a huge bush of a coleus, and it's great in sun or shade. Another winner, Portulaca um, Mojave Yellow. We've tried some of the other Mojave series, and I think this yellow is probably better than all of them. That's new and out this year. It makes a great ground cover. But a couple of times we went to uh, evaluate them early in the morning and it was very cloudy and they weren't quite all open. But the bees, when they open up, they love them. Now we're going to the silver medals. That was a lot of gold medals. We had an awful lot of gold medal winners last year, which of course is thrilling. Another one of the surefire um, begonias, this is cherry cordial. It has kind of an orangey red bloom and a copper or a bronze colored leaf. Its cousin is um, surefire red. It did well too. Here's the cherry cordial with a bronze leaf and the surefire red has a green leaf, but they're all fabulous plants. And here they are lined up. Cherry cordial, the red, the rose, which was a perfect all season winner, and the white, which I need to find at a nursery because I can't live without it now. The other kind of begonias I mentioned before is double up. This is the double up white with bronze leaf I talked about, and the double up red is another plant that makes this happy, tidy little ball with double powder puff blooms, this, this time in red. I think this one should have won for the best color. We never had that, that uh, quality or that award before, but I deem it so right now. It's, it really was the most spectacular uh, calibracoa to look at for the color. And the bees just stuffed themselves in the blooms. You couldn't even get them out. But it, it has an apricot, a fuchsia, a light pink, and a yellow, and they all show on the planet at the same time. So it was beerific. 
they this did well into August. Some of the calabricoas get tired. Um, I do believe our very wonderful container people that volunteered to uh, do the containers did give them some liquid fertilizer off and on. But this one did pretty well in the ground too. Now for years I've been dissing, uh, disrespecting the calabricoa, and I'm sorry, I take it back, because uh, we only had the ground to plant them in, and they did miserably in that. These, however, weren't really that bad. This one was the strongest calabricoa. It's been out before, and it's gorgeous also. Um, sun, coral sunset. A lot of times when you grow calabricoas in the greenhouse, through no fault of our own, but uh, the people watering at the greenhouse, which isn't us all the time, may tend to overwater calabricoa. And even professional greenhouses can have troubles with calabricoa growing. You need to give them fertilizer, they need more acidic conditions, and they hate being overwatered. So they'll come out of the greenhouse looking sick. This one didn't. Of all the calabricoas we had last year, it came out of the greenhouse looking good. It did great in a pot. It also did great in the ground. And it's such a happy color. This is in June. And this is in June. But golly, in August, it still looks pretty good. And here's its companions in the ground. But maybe it's the fact that our um, people taking care of this area either had a lot better soil there or they took care of it better because the calabricoas were not all dead like some of the past ones would have been in the ground. Helianthus, we got the, the Saturn, which has the orange ring around it, and we got the yellow again this year. These have been repeat award winners, and I do love these plants. Uh, Tom and Bill, who are in charge of the trials area, they decided they had found a piece of scrap livestock fencing, and it was the best thing to keep these from flopping over our tiny little path. So I thought that was a great idea to use that. Uh, and it did hold up these large, beautiful plants. There's certainly lots of blooms to pick too. I was threatening, uh, uh, telling the Proven Winter Company, I was gonna name my new kitten Saturn after these. Uh, we didn't end up doing that. My granddaughter named him Tigger, but Saturn would have been a good name for the orange and ochre in this gorgeous plant. Here's the yellow cousin of it. We, we tend to favor the Saturn a little bit more, but both are repeat winners. And there it is growing last year. Oh, I am going to point out this, which will come up later. That's another Cypress, Queen Tut, a smaller version than Prince Tut. And I'll have words on that in a bit. Here's the Petunia's mini vistas again, the uh, Scarlet and midnight with that very deep velvety purple. But when you put the purple with other plants, such as the scarlet or the yellow, it looks a lot better. But they both rated quite well and were both silver medal winners. And here they are, the yellow and the purple and the purple and the scarlet. Scarlet is more of an orangey red. Here's all the mini vistas out at Michigan State University, hot pink, the midnight, which tends to recede in the color, pink star, scarlet, white, and this bloomerific yellow at the very end. It's great plant. A coleus pineapple brandy was a winner for silver medal also. It, uh, it can have a bright chartreuse color and sometimes has a little bit of a burgundy to the stems and the very tips of the leaves. Again, here's a plant that tends toward the chartreuse or lime color and those colors will set off so many other plants. Um, excuse me, the pineapple brandy with the penny lace and yellow calabricoa. Here's the pineapple brandy out in full sun with coleus torchlight and in full shade. And it, they both look great all up there. But wow, this, this plant, that pineapple brandy, the color really sets off all the other colors around it. So I would love to have one of those this year. All right, I'm going to take a drink of water. Zach? So the question is, should I get another plant? Yes and purple, also yes, but in purple. So here's a purple plant. Salvia rock and deep purple, two to three feet tall. Now this one is new this year. 
they did have an older version. This is the 2023 version. It's improved. They do a lot this a lot. They'll take one plant that is good and they'll make it better. So it's got a fuller form and a lot more blooms on it. And I wish I uh, had time to show you the videos I took of a hummingbird just zooming in and out of these things. And that, but I put the picture up there. Uh, but hummingbirds just love that. That's worth planning near your front door just so you can see the hummingbirds fight over it. These and the other salvia are great for that. Salvia unplugged we've had out before also. It was a silver medal winner. It's not as tall and not as vigorous as the rocking series of salvia. Um, here it is a bit later in the season. They don't tend to bloom as fully as early season. That's early season and that's later, but they're still quite pretty and the pollinators like you for planting those. Bronze medals. So they're better than average and they're still quite good. Um, this little caliber koa, the bright yellow one, yellow improved, was quite pleasant. I'll be running through these a little bit fast. Caliber koa, the double yellow, I like that even better. It's a new one out this year. Here it is in a pot in July. And um, these are the caliber koas in the containers and also in the ground. This is July, August. And then they do run out of steam if they're in the ground by September. So this is what I normally expect. But really, they, they held in throughout most of the season. And they almost all season looked very good in the pots. The uh, heliotropium, heliotrope, August lavender, Augusta, Augusta lavender, I'm sorry. We've had this out before too. You get these long caterpillar blooms that have a purple flower on the end. It's fragrant, lightly fragrant. And it's the only heliotrope I've not killed in my landscaping. So it is bred to be in the landscaping. When it gets later season, it can open up a little bit, but most of the season it looks pretty good. And it's such a pretty lavender color. Another bronze winner was the Lantana Luscious Royale Lemon Tart. It gets difficult to say all these long names sometimes. Uh, the Royale series of their Lantanas are bred to be a little bit more compact and full. Some of the other regular Lantanas, they get really huge and they'll sprawl out different ways, but this one is meant to be more compact and full. They also had the Luscious Royale Red Zone, Red Zone, and it was gorgeous, deep, intense color. But sometimes, not all the plants, but in several different trial locations, I visited three last year besides ours, some of the blooms would hide under the new leaves, which I thought, gee, I'd rather see them more on the top. This was an interesting little coleus. Color Blaze Mini Me Watermelon. It was bred to be short, so it might be better in a container. But in our trials, also at uh, Four Star Nursery, which is one of Proven Winners Nurseries, and also at Michigan State, it had different colors. This is the bright color I think they were shooting for, but even on the same plant, some of the deeper burgundy showed through. And here you can see the bright red and then the deeper red. Um, so that I don't think was quite correct. A lot of these things are plant clones, and I'm thinking they need to work on this one a little bit more. So it either is all this or all that, whichever they were shooting for. Uh, another thing is not an official award, but I, I'd give this an honorable mention just because the next two plants were so lovely, but didn't quite make it to the bronze medal. This one missed by, I don't know, something like a tenth of a point. This is Lantana Luscious Basket Tangelo. And it's new, it's beautiful colors. The pollinators just thought it was great. And I would buy that one for sure. Another honorable mention is Lobelia with the really long name of Laguna Compact Blue with I Improved. All right, I got that out. But Lobelia are spectacular, true blue colored plant, and most of them die in July. Um, 
so these are so beautiful, just clouds of starry blues with the white center. This is a picture in July. They're not dead and they're also blooming. They don't get as vigorous in August, but this held on longer than any lobelia I've seen. So if you're a real fan of blue, uh, this might be something for you if you're not thinking it has to look perfect in September. This area that I planted it in, or we planted it in, has a tiny bit of shade and the very hot western sun in the afternoon. And I think the lobelia benefited from that. Now we go into different things. Here's kind of a participation award. And um, those plants, I usually think they're kind of ho-hum. This is the perennial we got last year. This is it looking its best. This is um, Coreopsis candlelight. But as you know, this is only the first year and we've got to keep it in place for three. The first year perennials sleep, the second year they creep. And I'm looking forward to the third year if this is going to leap. But it's a big, uh, lovely, excuse me, lovely plant, the fine uh, needled, fine threaded plant. Um, but I, it hasn't won any awards so far other than it was there. <laughs> Here's some others, you tried award. This is the Cypress um, Queen Tut. It's a lot shorter than Prince Tut. When planted in a container, all the other plants ate it until maybe August, and then it finally showed its head. It has very different looking, um, I'll call them blooms, than the Prince Tut. The Prince Tut has got these gorgeous fireworks that are big and open, and these are, they just look stunted. And I think that was the reason to make it smaller, but, it is not a plant I would buy. And I was fabulously disappointed at this juncus curly whirly. It came all corkscrew looking and I painted some rocks. I wanted it to look like big hair coming out. This did nothing. <laughs> it, it looked almost the same as when we planted it in May in September. They just sat there. I uh, Maybe it's supposed to be that way, but I, I really wish it would have been a lot fuller and grown. So it's a you tried award. The sweet potato upside is supposed to climb. Now there are other companies, Ball, I believe has one called Solar Tower. And I saw that at their trial gardens a number of years ago, both a, a kind of coffee colored uh, and a lime colored one. To me, it looked like it climbed a lot better than this one. This is in our children's garden. And we just waited a really long time for this to start climbing. It finally did get there toward the end of July. Um, this one is called Black Coffee and this one is called Key Lime, but Upside is the name of it. They are supposed to grow three to six feet tall, but to me, they seem to spend a lot of time running around on the ground and then didn't really get climbing much. Here's at Michigan State. This is at the very end of August. They did have a trellis here that's a pyramid, and it was thinking about climbing at the end, excuse me, end of July. And finally, by the very last bit of August, yes, it got up over the trellis and turned into Cousin Ed. Um, it, but it's an interesting plant. It just, I don't know if I would purchase it. I got to have some better use than turning into Cousin Ed, or maybe we should put sunglasses on it and a top hat. Maybe that'll work. Muhlenbeckia, a wire plant. This is called Muhlenbeckia big leaf and it can make a good ground cover. This is a picture I took a couple weeks ago in Florida. They've got it combined with a, um, uh, with a con other container plants and it, it looks pretty nice falling over the container. If any of you heard my talk on annuals at Michigan State University, uh, you may notice that's just parsley, moss curled. So it can be a good container plant too. But but the Muhlenbeckia may be climbing over a wall or a frilly uh, filler for a container. The Nemesia, as I mentioned earlier, those are usually just cool season plants. This one was gorgeous called mulberry, aromance mulberry. And this is the aromance pink. This is a stronger flower, but by August 7th, this is what they're doing. This is the mulberry and that is the pink. That's one of the reasons I plant some of the ones that are, oh, maybe not gonna be a strong middle of the season to late on the north side of the fence or north side of the shed, just because they don't show as well as say the petunias. 
Another plant like that with incredible early colors is Osteospermum Bright Light Sunset with this lavender hue and orange. It was lovely, particularly with a burgundy plant, but July to August, it kind of goes on vacation and there's only a few sporadic blooms. The foliage looks healthy. It just doesn't bloom too much. So from our trials team to you, the evaluation people and the folks that take care of all the different areas, I hope you that this has helped you decide on what you might want to spend your money on. Or you could just collect them all, like that woman. This is last year, end of season. So I'm Ann Tice. I'm an advanced master gardener, an MD, and ARG, which stands for Avid Rabid Gardener and the Plant Trial Tattler. This is my family after listening to my plant talk. Okay. There. Uh, okay, somebody, let's see. I'm going to look at these chat i'm gonna try to show the chat once uh there we go where do you find the vigor that is the hardest thing to find um i've looked on the proven winner site and they occasionally will say that i, I really wish the plant tags would come with a, a little v on there and you might know that those short flocks are probably a vigor of two but then maybe people wouldn't buy it. So I don't know. So I had to look those up under some of the growers information. But I wish more of them would would advertise that. We do get all the plants in as plugs and we do transplant them into four inch pots. Um, yeah, greenhouse and material ready and plant outside. Yes. Did the master gardeners plant all the plants on the same day? We did break it up into two or, or three sections. We tried to plant the containers first last year because now we have so many to put in with trials alone. So we did the containers and then the in-ground plants at the base. And I, Tom Ward, if he's here, he would know that. I think he's on vacation or Bill Million. Um, then I set out the plants and we did one area and the next day we did the other other areas. All right, any more questions? Oh, well, we try the Junkus um, Curly Whirly. No, we, we don't have a choice in what plants we get in. Um, the company initially initially we got away with murder because when I first set up I called all these companies back in 2001 and like begged everybody could you like donate we your master gardeners blah blah and none of the companies took us up except for proven winners because we had a connection with a man that used to run a uh, nursery in Monticello, Illinois. He and he had joined up with Proven Winners. We used to be able to go through their catalog and then pick out the plants we want and he would ship it by airplane, uh, which worked out pretty good, except for the time they delivered them to the airport in Champaign on a Friday and didn't call me until Tuesday. They were a bit dry. But after that, a couple of years after that, we were required, uh, we gave them feedback anyway, but they wanted us to give them very complete uh, descriptions and evaluations. We started to do that. They ship now the same quota of plants out to all of their uh, trial garden places, and we don't get to pick what we want or what we'd request. Uh, when do they decide to release to the public? Well, as I mentioned, it takes over six years for most plants. I, hmm, I think there was a biddens that it took 10 years of trials. And they, I, I wrote to the company, I asked if I could use two pictures that I got from a lecture once, but gosh, Marshall Dirks of Proven Winners is usually my buddy. Um, he didn't ever reply back. I think they're really, really busy this time of year. Um, but it, it showed a picture of field trials in the very early stages. And as far as the eye could see, all those were rejections. So they only take 3% of plants in the very end. Um, how do you determine where to buy these plants? Uh, I hope I'm catching everybody. Uh, well, no, no, oh, back back to the Junkus Curly Whirly. Um, that was tried in a bunch of different locations, which should have been good for it. And it just never really grew anywhere. So uh, I wasn't as impressed. And how do you determine where to buy? Well, okay, 
I'm I know the local nurseries around will try to carry a lot of proven winners. Uh, Country Arbors does, and um, uh, Prairie Gardens does, and I, you know, the uh, Danville Gardens also. But I tell you, I always make it a habit myself. I actually live in Michigan now, and we come to Illinois for week to 10 days every month. When we drive back from Michigan, I always stop at Sunrise Nursery in Grant Park, Illinois. They have the best prices. Let's face it, these are premium annuals as they like to label them. And Home Depot uh, and the box stores will carry some of them, but you can't get like the, or what is it? The uh, sweet potato Medusa green. I. Um, I've asked a couple places. There's a place in Altamont, Illinois that will carry some, but some of them are hard to find. The Sunrise Nursery, however, I think they have something like four to six acres under greenhouses. So you are not outside in the snow or rain or something. And you can buy a lot there. It's much less expensive. And let's see. Have you been to all other test places? How do they differ? Um, I've visited the ball gardens once a long time ago when we had ball plants. That's a magnificent place. It's up near Chicago to go see. And I really was sad when they cut us from the program, but they had financial cutbacks of a lot of their trial gardens and we got cut. Um, but that is a great one to see July and August to see how their plants are doing. They come out with like great vegetables and all sorts of flowers too. Um, uh, Michigan State University, I go there every year. And I also go to one of the three growers of Proven Winners, which is in Southeastern Michigan called Four Star Nursery. That's how we got the cheap um, container pots. They're $40 versus that huge size normally new would have been 340 And we couldn't have afforded that. Yes, Curly Willie has been on the market for a while. Okay. Uh, may have been stunted in the greenhouse. I don't know. I don't know about that. Which of your plants or presentation would you recommend for part shade? We don't have a really big shady area, but I would take any of those begonias. If someone wants to give them to me, fine, but I've got to find the surefire ones. I think those would be the best. We, uh, I can't tell you anything about it. We're not supposed to do mid-April of the ones we're getting in. We are gonna try a uh, Terenia this year. I myself have never been very good at growing Terenia, but we'll see if this improved one is good. Um, so part shade, I would say the begonias. I, I am a sucker for the sun patients. We didn't ever trial those, but I've trialed them in my own garden a lot. I love the compact sun patients. And also it's harder to find now. We got them from ball initially, excuse me. <laughs> but the bounce and the big bounce in patients, if you run across those, but I think most of that has gone over to the sun patients. Okay, uh, Ruth is saying some are sold at Owen Nursery. Where where we live in Michigan now, there's only one nursery, maybe two that carry much in the way of uh, uh, proven winter plants. Oh, overgrowth regulated. Yeah, I don't know about that. Um, but they show it in pictures looking very full in a container, the curly whirly juncas. So for us, it wasn't, I mean, different places will have different experiences. Ah, did I answer everything? I don't know. Has anybody been? I, I think so. I okay. think have gotten about everybody. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Anne. Very You're good welcome. Information. And thank you, everybody, for coming.